I'm Tracy from poppylady.com. I have been a nurse for about 10 years, and today my son Coco and I are gonna show you some tips on how to prevent infant choking and how to help a baby out if they are choking around you. Uh, choking is one of the leading causes of death in babies and kids up to age three or four, so some really important ways to prevent choking are having your baby, this goes for kids too, sitting upright, being not distracted, and being supervised during meals. So no walking around, no watching TV or movies, laughing as they're eating. You really wanna make sure they're sitting down and focused on the meal. So family meal times is a great way to make sure that you're hitting all of those ways to prevent choking. Um, a little anatomy refresher. So down our throat, we have two tubes. The front tube is your trachea going to your lungs, and the back tube is the esophagus leading to your stomach. So those are both going alongside down the throat. And as we're normally talking and going about our day, the trachea is the, the tube that's open from your mouth. So air goes down your mouth, into the trachea, into the lungs. But when we swallow, we bite food off with our incisors, grind it up with our molars, and then we make a bolus or a ball of food and swallow it. And as we're getting ready to swallow, there's a little trigger that's trap door that's tricked off, and that, that allows the food to go down the esophagus into the stomach. And when we choke, that's from food going down quite literally the wrong pipe. So it accidentally goes into the trachea headed to the lungs. And so the natural reflex is to gag and cough, and that's good, and that helps the food go up from the trachea and then back down the correct tube it's down the esophagus. So the problem with choking is that that can cause an injury because food has bacteria with it. And so if the bacteria goes down your trachea into your lungs, that can cause aspiration pneumonia or if it completely blocks off the airway, that's when you result, that results in death. So it's really important to be able to, if the, the little person can't clear the occlusion themselves, that we help them do that through the Heimlich maneuver. Um, but another way to prevent that first is to make sure that the food that we're giving our babies is small enough to, if it accidentally goes down the wrong pipe, it's not gonna completely occlude the airway. So I'm gonna show you a few tips on how to make sure that dice is really small for your food. The most dangerous foods are foods that are round and slippery. So some examples are hot dogs, grapes, and nuts of any kind. I usually do a really fine dice on foods like this or do a nut butter if you wanna expose your kids to nuts, which I highly recommend, especially peanuts. A baby's trachea is about the same diameter as your pinky. So anytime I'm cutting food for Cohen, I try to make it the same size as a Cheerio, which even if it goes down the wrong pipe, it can easily not occlude the airway. Sometimes I use a knife and a cutting board to dice foods up the, about the size of a Cheerio. I will use our food processor, and so I'll put all of our dinner or a serving of leftovers in there, and that will make the whole consistency small enough to pass through his esophagus, and if it gets stuck in the wrong tube, the airway. And then also, I love these clippers that we found on Amazon. You don't even use, need to use a knife and cutting board. You can just stand next to his high chair and dice everything up really small. I'll link those out in the article. And lastly, so this is an example of the perfect consistency. This is a hangry kit from Raised Reel. And this is exactly how you want your baby's food consistency to look like. These are a very small dice on pear and quinoa. So that is the perfect size for all of your little food chunks. So as babies don't have their molars yet, we want to make sure they have a really fine dice on their food. But even so, they're going from liquid milk to solids, food, and learning how to manipulate the food in their mouth. So it can easily happen for them to cough and gag as they're learning, and it's incredibly uncomfortable to be around. The natural instinct for all of us is to just slap, start slapping them on the back, but that's actually the opposite of what we should do. You just wanna let them clear it themselves. So as long as they have an effective cough or you're hearing them cry, that sounds like this. <coughs> You hear air going in and out both ways. You just want to be nearby, stay, stay near them. You can offer them water. I always have water for Cohen at mealtimes, which usually throws on the floor, and we go back and forth that way for about five minutes. Um, but I spoke to a speech-language pathologist who specializes in kids, and she mentioned that sippy cups are no longer recommended for kids because it causes problem with how their teeth come in and how they speak. So babies can go straight from a bottle with milk to an open cup, this is the Munchkin 360, or a cup with a straw, this is the Juvie Pegu. The point where you want
want to intervene is when they either start having an ineffective cough, and that is where you do not hear air going in and out. So that would sound like this. <coughs> you don't hear air going in and out, or if they're completely silent, they're not able to cry, or usually with babies, they get big eyes, they may be waving their arms, kind of asking for help without words. If that happens, then, and you had somebody else in the home, you're gonna ask them to call 911. If you're by yourself, you're just gonna go ahead and start. I'd pull them out of the high chair, pull their bib off, <laughs> get them out, and then you're gonna do back thrust, back blows, and chest thrust. So, you're going to, and I encourage everybody to practice this, not necessarily giving the blows, but just getting them into position because all of the videos and practice, if you do a CPR class, are with a mannequin, and a baby is so different. I was pretty horrified the first time I tried this because it's pretty hard to get them into position. So you're going to use your hand to support their neck and keep their jaw open. Where's your baby? Thanks. <laughs> and then you're going to put their head down at a 45-degree angle with their body, like this. Legs up. And you're going to find their their shoulder blades and give five blows with the heel of your hand directly in between the shoulder blades, kind of headed towards their head. So it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, about one per second. And that is about this hard. One, two, three, four, five. So you're, you're slacking them pretty hard there. And then you're gonna flip them over, support their neck, again, head, Head is kind of down. You find their nipple line, go two fingers down, and that's where you're gonna push, and you're gonna push about as hard as a third of the depth of their chest. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So that's about this hard. One, two, three, four, five. Look in their mouth, and if you see any food near the front of their mouth, go ahead and put your finger in and sweep it out. If you don't see anything or it's in the back of their mouth, just leave it because you could push it down further and cause it to start all over again. There is a new product on the market called the Life Back, and I purchased this for $70. This is their travel kit, and it was designed for when the Heimlich Maneuver fails, which happens in about 30% of choking cases. So it comes with an adult mask and a baby mask. This is to be used in kids over one year old, and it goes over the bridge of their nose onto their mouth, and then you push down up, it's a one-way valve, so it sucks up whatever was occluding their airway, and at that point you could give effective CPR if they still weren't breathing. So I hope that you don't have to use anything that you've used in these videos that you've seen in these videos today as rescue maneuvers. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I encourage everybody to take a CPR class again; it's really helpful. And my website, The Poppy Lady, is unsponsored reviews and tips from women like you and people. There might be men watching too. Um, but if you have any tips for home, self, baby, beauty, please send them my way and I love to share them because I think we can all use more honesty and tips to help us get through life together. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.